one and it's number two. Yes, yes, so hell is here. Today we're back with Home Free and this is a classic song, When a Man Loves a Woman. Very famous song, first sung by Percy Sledge in the 60s and then famously covered by Michael Bolton. Michael Bolton did perform it in the same key as Percy Sledge and the opening is a vocal statement really. It comes in on a super high powerful note in the chest voice, straight in on a B flat. One difference with Michael Bolton's version to Percy Sledge though is that he actually does a key change to move a little bit higher. So I don't know if Home Free are going to do this or not, but I'm imagining that this song as a whole in general is probably one for Austin to sing. I feel like Austin's voice would suit it quite well. Maybe Rob as well, but at the moment I'm thinking Austin. It's a ballad. It's a slow love song. There's nothing too complex in the harmonies overall in the original song. So I'm curious to see if Home Free are going to follow in that vein of harmonic simplicity or if they'll bring some of their token good filth, as I like to call it, into their arrangement. I'd imagine not owing to the nature of the song. It's probably something where you don't want to make it too complex and detract from the message. But I guess we'll see. Uh, Home Freeze song came out in 2021 and in the video description it says it's part of their Sounds of Lockdown album. So I think this is the first Home Free reaction I've done to one of their lockdown works. So these are the things that I'm thinking about and wondering so let's just get straight into it. This is cool. This is a cool one. It's quite different as well to a lot of the home free things that I've seen so far. Before we get into the musical side of things, I just want to say I really like the video. It's quirky. It shows them as a group still together, quite weirdly on those of different screens. But they maintain this feeling of camaraderie amongst them, whilst also clearly giving Austin the centre stage, him being the only in-person singer. It's nice, you know, it's a communal feel and done in lockdown, a very trying time in a lot of people's lives, I imagine. And also just to note, they are singing in the same key as the original and Michael Bolton's version. Which means that Austin, just like them, gets to show off that crazy high chest voice of his. Yeah, musically, we've seen some cool stuff here, so let's take it back to the beginning. So, the opening, one of the catchy things about this song as a whole, to me at least, is the descending bass line. It's going dum, 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 dum. And if we listen here, it's Tim who has it. <laughs> So whilst Tim has those notes, you'll notice that he's singing other notes in between. He's outlining the descending bass line beautifully whilst adding in filler notes, which are basically filling in the gaps between a scale. Or you can think of it as reducing the simplicity of just moving stepwise down one by one. Each time he adds in these filler notes, they're different. Sometimes he sings the same note that he's about to sing. Sometimes he'll go dum bum bum. Other times he'll go bum bum bum. You know, up, down, down, up, etc. That kind of thing. And besides Adam with the beat, we just have static ooh chord going on in the background. So with Tim adding in these extra notes here and there, it's really a nice way to add a bit of variety into an otherwise fairly static arrangement at this point. Also, the song itself is quite repetitive. I don't know if they're going to stick to this or if they're going to add in loads of variety, loads of different sections, but it does seem like this kind of song where you probably don't want to change things too much. In my mind, it's one of those simple is better kind of songs where the lead vocals are really what shines. Right, so then we get Austin's first entry. Ooh, 
no surprise at all it's Austin that they've got to sing this I think his voice just suits it so well this song was actually written for Austin even though it was written in the 60s and the writers didn't know it they were definitely writing it for Austin overall home free are keeping things quite simple especially in terms of chord structures and harmonies but being home free they can't resist adding in tiny little bits that are quite non-standard in this case it's the chord that ends each verse or section it leaves us unresolved before then repeating the verse because it's quite a repetitive song and then taking us back and resetting that chord on OO just before Austin then comes in to reset the verse. Here, in this case, we have a chord of A flat, with Tim really showing that by singing it at the bottom. But actually, the other notes that we're hearing are these. And it's this B flat here that is the juicy note in this case. If you've watched my other videos, you'll be familiar with this note. It's the second note in the scale. So here we're in A flat number one, and it's number two, which is what we call the super tonic. Implementing this seems like quite a popular choice in a cappella. We see it quite frequently with home free and pentatonics. And then just after that, I want you to listen to the vowel sounds that the guys are singing in the background behind Austin. I find it crazy how much just using a different foul sound changes the power or the strength of the music that we're hearing. The first is as, while Austin is high up, and then the chords don't really move down by that much in pitch when they change to ooh, but it suddenly feels like the volume has just been turned right down. <laughs> And this is probably so they don't drown out Austin because now Austin is actually singing quite a bit down in terms of pitch. So we repeat again, we move on a bit and Home Free slowly but surely is starting to introduce, I'm just gonna call them non-standard things, just for a bit of variety. We get this bit. Spend his very last dime. Now we have a higher part that we haven't had before in the background. Ooh, that A flat there. But we also get another cheeky note thrown into chord just after that. Spend his very last dime which is this note here. It's very subtle, very quiet, but to use my coloured square analogy that I used in my reaction to Tim of Home Free singing with Peter Holland's The Sound of Silence, if you haven't seen that reaction, please do go watch that. It's these notes that are slightly off, no matter how subtle and quiet they are, that do really stand out. So to summarise that analogy, we have 100 squares here. Look how much the red square stands out, even though it's outnumbered 99 to 1. And even if we're to introduce some other colours, so we've got green, blue and yellow, the red square is still the one that just stands out, even though it is again outnumbered 99 to 1. So it's this note here in this case, which is acting as the red square. And then that part actually moves down to the B flat, which we saw earlier, which was the super tonic, note number two in the scale. So that part there, that voice is basically the bringer of the good filth so far. So we've established that it's a repetitive song and we've seen them introduce some slightly more funky notes a bit more frequently with each verse to add a bit of variety. And here's another example of some variety being added in. Not much variety, but still some variety, which is very important when it comes to repetitive songs. Listen to the chords behind Austin singing the word all. Now we had two chords sung there with previously in the previous verses at this point it's only just been one chord static and they have more freedom as well in the backing parts. In the rain. You hear the ooze moving around much more. You know even one of the parts just going up there. More freedom slowly but surely. So I'm excited to see how it pans out. Let's carry on. that's the way it ought to be.
All right, quick pause here, one for copyright reasons, but also just to acknowledge Austin absolutely smashing this out of the park. It's crazy, it's crazy. I kind of want to continue just straight to the end to not break the flow of Austin just continuously smashing out this melody. Super high for him, so much power, belting. Usually Home Free distribute the melody amongst all the parts, but now this is really is the Austin show. So yeah, I think we'll carry on just to the end. <laughs> Wow, that's nice. That's a really nice one. They've taken a classic, repetitive song and have somehow just made it so interesting, even though it is still mostly fairly repetitive. Again, it's the art of arranging. They're just so good at these arrangements. Yeah, there's always some more musical things that I'd like to point out there. Just after we carried on the first time, there was a juicy chord actually straight away. The juiciest chord we've heard so far. We're expecting the chord of A flat major. But instead of A flat major, we get this. As you can see, it's the minor version with the seventh note added in. You can think of this as the opposite to the supertonic we were talking about earlier. Instead of having one note above the root, so an A flat one note above it is B flat, we have one note below it, that's the seventh note, which is this one here. And it's Rob's note, which is this one here, this B, that changes the major version to the minor version of the chord. And when this happens, they show Rob. <laughs> at this moment because it's his note that is the important note here to change the mood of this chord. Then this part stood out to me actually, it's where everyone's singing quite high up in their registers. There's the use of multi-tracking because there are more voices than there are people. And honestly, with the recent discovery of Tim's range, knowing that Adam can sing way up there too, Austin obviously, and Rob, and to be honest, probably Chance. So anyone could be singing the higher part there. But the point is, everyone at this moment is high up in their register, except for Tim with the bass, regardless of whom it is. Tim is actually very low down in terms of this arrangement, so that's a nice little contrast there. Alright, and then we get this section. Baby, please don't treat me bad. We get a key change moving up just like Michael Bolton did, but you'll notice the slightly more funky chords leading up to the key change. They're there basically just to make the key change sound a bit more natural. They're moving away from where we were before, even though we do return to where we were before, before the key change. If we were just staying exactly as we were before, then the key change would seem a bit unnatural, just everything sliding up by one note. Also, the effect that Adam does here is mad. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it's been treated with a bit of reverb, and fair enough, why not in a studio version? But it reminds you of aliens or something, you know, something otherworldly, very, very cool. To move forward a little bit, how the words never see are treated. Can never see. Moments like this stand out much more because of how carefully Home Free are choosing when to sing words and when not to sing words. The backing singing is pretty much for the majority of this performance, just ooh and ah, just vowel sounds for the whole thing. They're accepting their role as instruments, supporting Austin. It's nice to see that, you know, no egos on show. So then when everyone else besides Austin does occasionally sing a couple of words, it really stands out and emphasizes those words that they're singing. Then I thought this part was quite cool. <laughs> Every part is static, except for Austin, who is the opposite of static. Nice vocal run. Austin's movement between the notes causes temporary dissonances when the note doesn't fit with the chord around it, and then he resolves, and then he moves again. So it's like tension being built, then released, then built, then released very quickly. Especially the second note he sings. <laughs> There, that's a nice chord at that moment. Shout out to Adam. I know he hasn't had the most exciting, crazy percussion in this song, being a slow love ballad, but this part here, close your eyes, it just sounds like a drum set. 
which leads into the climax moment, if you can call it that, where we now see the backing singers singing homophonically with words. They're not just singing ooh, ah. <laughs> And then to end, they choose to repeat and phase out, which is a good choice because now Austin, to finish this Austin show, just has free reign to do what he wants. They're basically saying, Austin, mate, look, we'll keep on just singing and you do you until you get knackered. Wait a man. Wait a man. And then Austin, he goes really high. That top note there, that's the B which is higher than your typical chorus that is expected to sing. Yeah, overall, really, really nice arrangement, actually. Nice song. I think they did it a complete justice. They added in little home free isms whilst not detracting anything from the overall sentiment of the original song. Yeah, I think that's very nicely done. All right, let's leave it there. As always, thank you for watching. Would appreciate a like, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos and want to support me and join the community, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships. Link in the description below. And I will see you next time.